Hello, hi, how are you? I hope you guys are having an amazing day today. Hello and welcome to Yas or Pause. Hi, so first of all, candle of the day. Uh, today we're burning the Oliver and Stella candle. I love them. They're so cute. I just wanted them to be near me today. Anyway, hi. So today's video, as I already said, we're doing a Yas or Pass. I'm super excited about this. We're just going to go through, talk about some new makeup. Will I buy it? Won't I buy it? Probably won't. Um, and yeah, uh, let's jump right into it. The first thing I want to talk about is the new 4-3 Beauty uh, Body Milks. I first of all, hate the name. I, I don't like the face milk either. I just think that putting milk in the title of anything makes me instantly grossed out. I just think of like expired milk. Like I don't like that they call everything face milk and body milk. So I hate the name of this, but I actually think that this is really cute. I actually have a couple of the face milks and genuinely do, while well, I hate the name, enjoy the formula, enjoy the concept, and they make my skin very soft. I can't really speak to if they do anything other than make my skin very soft, but they exceed in the one thing that I personally care a lot about. So I actually want these, but I haven't bought them yet, mostly because the price point is $18, and that just feels like a lot. Like, I don't know if I'm just so used to ColourPop being dirt cheap, so I'm like, ooh. <laughs> over $10? Like what? Also, you guys know anything with coconut and avocado I'm like obsessed with. They look really pretty. You guys know I'm obsessed with lotions and anything that makes my hands soft. So I'm about these. I think they're really cute. I think the packaging is really cute. Overall, I actually really like the fourth ray aesthetic. Now that their stuff is relatively basic in formula, I actually think that's kind of a good thing. I appreciate that I know that I can use this and it's not going to like break me out or make my skin sensitive or do anything weird just because the formula is typically so basic basic for a lot of the 4-3 Beauty stuff. And I think for how basic it is, the price point is really fantastic because it's not like they're trying to be this bougie luxury brand. They're making their stuff really affordable and while it's pretty basic formula, it does the job. This isn't really makeup, but Kathleen Light is coming out with these new shades and I'm not the biggest nail polish person. I typically buy, I have some Holo Taco stuff because I love how pretty it looks, especially my toenails. I think it looks really pretty for toenails. That's such a weird sentence, but I think it does. I think it looks so cute and like, I just just love how like sparkly it is. But I normally will just buy very cheap nail polish because I am a very anxious person and I pick off my nail polish like it's my job. Like I truly will paint my nails probably every three nights and they, it will be completely gone from the three nights before because I pick at my nails so much. So I normally stay away from this type of stuff because I'm like, okay, why would I buy expensive nail polish? I'm gonna pick it off. However, she made my absolute favorite color into a nail polish and that is this more purpley blue one. For those of you that don't know, my favorite color is periwinkle and this is like the perfect periwinkle mixture. I think I'm probably going to buy all three of these just because these are some of my favorite colors and I've never seen my favorite colors like this in a nail polish. I just picture that purpley periwinkle color with this sort of like glittery top coat over it and I think that's going to look absolutely stunning. Normally not about that, but I think it's okay to make exceptions when it's like your favorite color because this is legitimately my favorite color. Like I think it's so beautiful and pretty. Okay, let's talk about this. This is the new Tartlet palette, which they made it bigger, which, okay, I, I bought this palette. <laughs> I bought it. I'm wearing it on my eyes right now. It was a really strong moment of weakness where I just saw it and was like, that is perfect. I think it's because I love the Tartlet and Bloom so much. And I've wanted a pinker version of the Tartlet and Bloom for so long that to see that they finally did it, I just got incredibly excited. Um, it's actually a little bit more interesting in person than it looks online. Like I, it's definitely a basic boring, you don't really need it palette, but like I, I caved. Anyway. <laughs> Regardless, I obviously think for me this is like perfect because I love the Tarte eyeshadow palette formula, particularly their Tartlet formula. I think it's genuinely fantastic. And again, I wanted a pinker version, so I thought this was great. Do I think like you need this after using it especially? No. I think it's just okay. If you have a basic pink eyeshadow palette, I don't think you need this. For me personally, I just knew that I would love this formula, so that's why I got it. I will say I think it's a weird move on Tarte's part to put out such a big palette when we're kind of seeing the trend of eyeshadow 
eyeshadow palettes kind of go more towards these smaller, concise palettes. I actually feel, had they made this a nine pan palette, had they cut out those first two rows and moved that pink and purple glitter, the last two, moved them down. Maybe I'll Photoshop this really quick and just put up a picture of what I think would have looked better. Had they made this a nine pan and just made it more concise, but still had those pinks and purples and the dark browns, I think this actually would have been like a winning palette from them. Like I think a lot of people would have bought it. I think a lot of people would have been more interested in it. I think this could have been really, really good. They didn't need to do all this. Like for someone like me who loves basic neutral pink tones, this is perfect. But not a, most people are not vibing with this right now. Like this is definitely not a trendy, interesting launch, which I think Tarte, unfortunately for them, like desperately needs a trendy and interesting launch with like a cool concept that they fully committed to. I know I harp on the concept thing all the time, but like Tarte is a brand that is just kind of dying out and they're really relying on basic, basic bitches like me <laughs> to keep them afloat and they can't rely on that forever because I can only buy so many basic pink neutral palettes like they need to start being more interesting and putting out more interesting products in order to catch the attention of people and I just feel like they're not doing that you know Lime Crime put out some new palettes called the Aura and the Glory palette they're nine pans which again I think is trendy I really do and I like that the pans are bigger and there's less wasted space I always love how that looks I've seen a couple other brands do this kind of design I always think it looks better because you just have more eyeshadow like it looks like you have more eyeshadow I enjoy that even if it's a small palette it feels like more I don't hate these color stories but I have to say this very much looks like a makeup revolution launch and not so much a lime crime launch like when I saw this picture I was like oh makeup revolution came out with some new palettes I don't hate the color stories though I think they're kind of interesting I particularly love the kind of uh aqua green blue pinky purple purple one. I think that's actually a really fun color story. I have been vibing with these types of colors lately where you mix like the pinks with the greens. I think it's really pretty. I, I am a little confused about why they went so cheap and chintzy on packaging. And that's really just because it's it's not bad, but it's definitely cheaper and like not as uh, nice looking that they normally do. It has to make me wonder if there's something and they're charging. Th oh, okay, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Hold on. Pause. They're charging $30 for nine shadows in basic ColourPop Makeup Revolution packaging? What? No, absolutely not. Do not pay $30 for these. I don't, I'm not really a big Lime Crime supporter anyway, but even if you are, do not pay $30 for nine shadows. They're not that good. Never mind. I take every positive thing I said back. That price point is ridiculous. Absolutely not. That is such an absurd price point. That, that, isn't that what they charge for like their Venus palettes, the little Venus ones that are six pans, but have like beautiful cardboard packaging with like art on the front? No, ridiculous, absolutely not, not a fan. They're, that's not that good. <laughs> I do want to say a rare beauty came out. I did a tutorial on these already, so I got them in PR, but they came out with these cream blushes, liquid eyeshadows, and these like gloss bomb things. I have to say, I know everybody always gets obsessed with the blushes from rare beauty launches, but there's always a product from their launches so far that I love that I see nobody else raving about. And I don't know if it's because like it's not actually good, but I feel like it is. They came out, those liquid eyeshadows are bomb. The one eyeshadow ready to go out the door pop it on, blend it out, boom, bada bing, done. Genius. I love those liquid eyeshadows. I've used them multiple times now. The whole concept behind them is so genius to me. I'm obsessed with those cream eyeshadows. I think it's such a good idea and I also love pairing it with the corresponding like balm. I think the lip gloss balms are actually amazing. They don't have the longest wear time so you definitely have to be reapplying which I can understand why that would annoy some people. Personally with like a gloss or a balm I plan on reapplying anyway but my lips are small and everything falls off of them so so I don't really care about that but I will say I think they're a really good formula they're very comfortable to wear they're easy to wear they don't goop up they're not hyper pigmented but they're not no pigment like I think they're really good and I liked the cream blushes I think they're okay but I would say out of this whole launch the eyeshadows and the glosses were like my favorite part so if you're gonna buy one thing from this launch on my recommendation I would recommend one of those liquid eyeshadows because I think they're so dope there was no like learner's curve to it it worked super easy. It applied super easy. Like really, really loved those. Melt came out with the Blueprint palette, which is actually just a version of the stacks. They came out with the Blueprint Melt stack in the little stackable formula that I absolutely despise. They 
they came out with it in palette form. I don't really like Melt's formula, I've said it before, but I respect the fact that Melt was like, okay, we get it the stack packaging kind of sucks. Like, we're not going to do that anymore. We're going to switch everything over to normal packaging because there's a reason people did it like this in the first place. I appreciate that they're owning up to the fact that the stacks were not the greatest design. They were cool in theory, but just in practice, they were not practical. I appreciate that they're owning that and just switching everything over to palettes. Um, and I think this palette's cool. I'm not going to buy it. I don't really need anything like this, and I'm not a big fan of the formula, but, you know, it's whatever. I think Melts has some, they have really, like, amazing lines launches and then some of them and I'm like oh my god the concept the execution like it's beautiful and then they have some like this where I'm like meh you could have just made a full-on blue palette like I think people would have liked that more than adding in or like a blue with that pop of orange that would have been sick like an, instead of that red had they put like a neon orange there or something crazy I think it would have just stood out so much more and Melt I feel is the type of brand that can get away with that they can get away with not putting a single neutral in their palette and people will eat it up um so I wish they'd gone a little bit more into it and a little bit more crazy with it, but I don't think it's bad by any means. Violet Voss is just so dull to me now. It sucks. They used to have, I had a couple of their palettes. I had the Holy Grail palette, I remember. Um, and what other one did I had? I had the, I had the Holy Grail and I had some random one that I got on a Poshmark in like 2016. I bought it on Poshmark. It might not have even been a real palette. I don't know, but this Wildflower palette, it, it's just boring. Like, I don't know. I don't know. It's just kind of dull. Like, it's not bad by any means, but it's, it, it kind of reminds me of the Tartlet palette, uh, just a smaller version. Those shimmers look pretty, but for some reason, something about this just does not appeal to me. I wish Violet Voss, I said this two years ago, and I say it again today, I wish Violet Voss would stop making eyeshadow palettes. I wish they would start branching out into other aspects of makeup. I know they made a face palette, and they might have some blushes, but I wish they would start making bronzers, blushes, highlighters, glitter glues, like, um, just expanding into face powders. Like, I wish they would start expanding their range past eyeshadow palettes, because at this point, this is just a mini version of the Holy Grail palette. Like, they've done it all, because they have so many eyeshadow palettes out. Like, lip glosses, even. Just, I wish they would go past making eyeshadow palettes, because I feel like the only thing I ever see them release are these palettes, and it's getting to a point where it's so repetitive from them that it's, like, dull to see. Even though, in theory, this is like not a bad palette. It's cute. It's neutral, whatever. It's just dull because it's coming from Violet Boss and it's like, well, I've seen this a million times from them, you know? Anastasia came out with a clear brow gel, a sort of icy white highlighter, and then two different types of glosses. I'm not like angry at this launch. I think that the clear brow gel thing that's supposed to be kind of their version, I believe, of the soap brow trend, I don't think that that's a bad thing, especially considering how they kind of got their start doing brow products, and I think this is very trendy for them. I also don't think the highlighter is necessarily bad. It uh, The embossing on it is beautiful. I think an icy white highlighter is something they don't have, so I, I appreciate that. I think the glosses are just kind of overpriced for what they are, and I don't particularly like the Anastasia gloss formula anyway. I think instead of doing this weird milky gloss, they should have just done a clear gloss. I think that would have just looked more cohesive and looked a little bit better than having this weird, like, milky white one that I can't see anybody really liking or appreciating. Um, overall, I don't think this is a bad launch from them. I think it's pretty solid. I appreciate that it's all very aesthetically pleasing. This feels very reminiscent of Anastasia before all the Norvina crap started, and honestly, I probably would have bought some of these products, um, but as of right now, I'm still just not really supporting the brand. I'm not really into Anastasia. I'm not writing them off forever, but they've done so much shady stuff in the last couple of years, particularly Norvina, that I just would like to see more of this before I start, like, giving my coin to a brand like this again. And again, I think there's, you can get an icy white highlighter from Give Me Glow. That's going to be beautiful. You can get a clear gloss from, I love the Midas icing glosses. You can get a clear gloss from Midas. You can get that clear, glossy brow pomade from Patrick Ta. Like, you can buy these products from other brands, so I don't see the need to support a brand like Anastasia, but I will say this is definitely my favorite launch from them in a very long time. This is the first one I've seen that I've been like, wow, I'm interested in that. I like this. It looks like Anastasia, like the brand I used to love, you know? It's like seeing an ex on Facebook and being like, oh, I'm glad they're doing well, but you're just not really interested still. That's how I feel about that. Okay, let's talk about this YSL contraption. Okay, I commend them for the innovation. This is basically a $300 machine and the lipstick pods that you need to make it run cost 
$100 a piece for three, I believe. And you basically can create your own custom lip shade via this machine that also, for some reason, has Bluetooth. Why? I, maybe you can play music while you, I don't know. Nobody needs this. You don't need a $300. Maybe if you're like a professional makeup artist for celebrities. So Patrick Ta, if you're watching this, sure, go off, buy this. Anybody else, don't buy this. This gives me very strong like technology version of those um, lipstick mixing kits that they sell for professional makeup artists where like Anastasia has one, I believe uh, Makeup by Mario makeup line has one where you can like mix your own and they sell it to everyday consumers as like you can custom you'll never need to buy another lipstick again you can custom create your own lipstick and I know because I fell for that a couple years ago and I bought the ABH one because I was like I will never need to buy another lipstick again I can just mix my own lipsticks and this is great and this is basically what this is except a very overpriced version of that and the reality is you're gonna buy more lipsticks after this you are not gonna buy this and then never buy another lipstick again if you have the type of money to spend $300 plus a hundred dollars for the actual cartridges. If you had that type of money, you don't need this in the first place because you could just buy $400 worth of lipsticks at one point in time. Like, you don't need a custom creator. It's just weird. You're, you don't need this. You really don't. I wish, I wish Kimberly Clark was still making videos for moments like this because like you don't need this. Please don't buy it. Wet n Wild came out with a Valentine's Day collection that is literally the laziest thing I've ever seen. I'm sure somebody's going to tell me in the comments that this is like inspired by a collection they did in 2011. So, because that's what it looks like. It looks like straight out of 2011. They just did the classic love with a heart where the O is and like that's that on that and then made the packaging pink um yeah not at all interested in this one Wet n Wild used to be so good with concepts too they're a brand that I feel like really committed to concepts and they kept the price affordable while making the packaging interesting but this is just not at all interesting or intriguing like the blush looks pretty I'll give them that the, the blush looks cute at least I would have loved to see maybe like hearts sprinkled around the packaging like on that pink top had they imprinted little hearts or if they had done something that was just a little bit more than just put love <laughs> and then call it a valentine's day collection I think I would have been a little more intrigued but no not super interested in that one. Let's talk about Auroric Beauty, which is Samantha Ravindahl's um, makeup line. I am so excited for this. I'm buying everything. Um, well, that's not true. I'm only, I'm gonna buy the Glow Serum thing, which I'm assuming is kind of her version of the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. And I'm gonna buy all of the cream and shimmer shadows just to try out. I'm gonna do a full review. Very, very excited for this. I think a lot of people were a little shocked by the price point, And I get that because the price point was a little bit like, oh, that's a little bit. That's kind of a lot. Like the $39 each for those shadows does seem like a pretty steep price point. But I will say if the quality is anything like what she showed in her videos, which I'm assuming it will be, I think that the price point makes sense. It seems like she really went out of her way to make this an ethically sourced brand. And the problem is, which what kind of sucks, is you can't really do ethically sourced things without making the price point a little bit higher. So I think for what she's trying to do and the mission of her brand, the price point actually makes a lot of sense. And I also think she's definitely trying to be a luxury brand. She's not trying to say that this is a more affordable or drugstore brand she's marketing herself as a higher end luxury brand which there is a market for so okay and honestly because it's from Sam like I have really high hopes because she just has such good taste in makeup that I feel like anything that she creates is going to be incredible I think because of her really good reputation in the beauty space that makes me trust this launch even more sometimes with influencer brands I want to wait and see reviews before I make a decision but with her I feel very confident that I'm going to like and enjoy the products that I get from her and I think the products she actually ended up creating are very trendy, very on par with what we, what people are wanting right now, but also things that don't have a lot of dupes to them. Like you don't see a lot of this cream to powder stuff. The only thing I can think of off the top of my head is Tom Ford for those shadows, which are way more expensive than these. And you also don't see a lot of these more glowy kind of filter like glow lust. Besides the only thing I can think of is the Charlotte Tilbury one. So not a lot of competition for these products, which I think was also very smart on her part. Next, let's talk about the Animal Crossing collab. Now, I actually like this collaboration but there's kind of a catch with ColourPop. I, I, I'm struggling with ColourPop right now because 
a lot of people, particularly in the black community, have been speaking up about their lack of inclusivity. And it's been being talked about for a while. It kind of seems like they're not doing anything about it. Um, <laughs> like they're just blatantly ignoring the criticism. And that kind of came to a head with this collection where it would have been very easy to make this an inclusive collection. Like it would have been very easy to make these blushes either a lot brighter or a little bit deeper so they could actually appear on deeper skin tones. Because as it stands, these blushes will not appear on anything darker than like my skin tone, which is not okay, especially considering it's not just this one launch. It's consistently across the board. None of their blushes work for deeper skin tones. And again, with the eyeshadow palette, I saw a girl on Twitter. If I can find the picture, I'll put it right here. I responded to it because it was so amazing how like making small tweaks made it 10 times more not only inclusive but just looked more interesting. Like I don't think this was a bad collection by any means. I don't think it was poorly done. It doesn't feel as lazy as some of their other collections have in the past. Some of their other collaborations feels like a lot of thought went into it but it feels like a lot of thought went into it for white people and not necessarily people with deeper skin tones. Let me know what you guys think about that down below because I'm really starting to get um done with Colourpop at this point. I really am. I'm I'm debating asking to be taken off of their PR list just because I feel like they're getting into that territory of a few other brands I've talked about where it's just there's never it kind of feels like hourglass where it's like there's just never inclusivity and even attempts at inclusivity like we could talk about the wild child collection it felt lazy half-assed thrown together and even those blushes like what what are those <laughs> those are blushes for deeper skin tones feels like they're trying to give the black community this like token collection just for them so they'll stop completely about the lack of inclusivity and then they're going to go back to producing like Candyland collections and stuff that doesn't work for them. At what point is this blatant lack of inclusivity despite knowing the problem enough is enough you know especially given that we know Colourpop can go from an idea to production in nine days and this problem has been going on for over a year with them so it's not like they couldn't have done something within the span of like a fucking month if they wanted to I don't know let me know what you guys think down below I've been kind of watching the situation unfold to see how things happen but it just seems like well, I, Amanda has a really fantastic video on it that I'll link down below that I think really sums up kind of what people are feeling and thinking about the whole situation. And I really appreciated her video. So you should go check that out down below. I want to give a quick shout out to Angelica, Angelica Nyquist here on YouTube. She came out with a new collaboration with Kaleidos. I am getting this in PR and I am going to do a talktorial on it. I am so excited for her. I think this is just such a good representation of her and her channel. And I think it looks beautiful. The packaging is stunning. The whole idea behind this of like Club Nebula, I think is so, so fun. I know that their eyeshadow formula really never disappoints me. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful formula that I really, really enjoy. So I am very excited to get my hands on this and to play with it and do a tutorial with it. So I'll have my thoughts up soon, but I just want to give a shout out because I love Angelica. She's one of the first people ever on YouTube to shout me out. She's a genuinely such a kind-hearted individual who just loves makeup and gives some of the best and most honest and thorough reviews on indie makeup particularly. So I think this collaboration is just a match made in heaven. It's perfect. So I'm really excited for her. <laughs> Finally, let's talk about this. Oh, I want this so bad, but I'm not going to do it. I want everything from this Natasha Denona Valentine's Day collection. I know that it's a little bit basic. The duo of the blush and the highlighter makes me want to cry. I want it so bad. It's so so pretty and I love the Natasha Denona highlighter formula. I love it so much and the blush is gorgeous. I also think the eyeshadow palette is actually really pretty. I'm not gonna buy it because small palettes, especially ones that are physically this small, just tend to get a little bit lost in my collection. But really the most tempting thing for me is that blush and highlighter. I love that she didn't come out with another palette that was like a four pan. It just, those were so expensive and they felt like a lot and it was just like, I didn't end up using half of it. I only used like one part of it. So that's why this is particularly tempting is because I would use that blush and that highlighter but the reality is and I'm wondering if this is the reality for a lot of people I just do not need any more blushes or highlighters no matter what formula they are no matter what color they are no matter any of that I just don't need it. I don't need any more blushes or highlighters. It would have to be something really groundbreaking and show-stopping for me to be like yes <laughs> I need you. Like, 
I need to spend my money on you. And this just isn't, unfortunately. As beautiful as I think it is and as much as I think I'd get some use out of it, I think at this point in time, for me at least, in 2021, is gonna be a year of like using what I have instead of just buying the new stuff. Because the reality is I probably won't use this as much just because I already have some beautiful highlighters I love. And I also have the Natasha Denona Super Glow um, highlighter, which I love, in this almost exact color. It's like a pinky, frosty color. And I adore that highlighter, but I already have it. <laughs> I don't need this one too, but it is beautiful. I think overall this collection, again, really on trend. I believe that's a cream blush. It's, you know, very on trend. I think the smaller eyeshadow palette with a more concise sort of color story, very on trend. I think the embossing with the hearts is actually adorable. This is the type of packaging I'm talking about where it's like you committed to a Valentine's Day theme. This is what I'm talking about. I don't think it's bad by any means. It's just not something I need, unfortunately. But it's, ugh. Is it? That's like the worst part. That's like one of the harder things to admit to yourself is when like you want something and you think it's beautiful but you're like mm, I don't need it though <laughs> anyway I love you guys so much I hope you like this video if you did please like and subscribe or just like or just subscribe or do neither honestly just so happy you're watching me thank you so much for being here my merch my social media and everything I'm wearing on my face will be linked down below along with my little social justice corner that you can go check out go see some you know links to organizations you can be a part of uh stay informed stay involved I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye!